Hey, hey, my peeps. If this is your first time here at Bible Infusion, welcome. Please excuse how dark it is. Uh, there's lots of wintry, mixy sludge happening outside. If you're a Bible Infusion regular, welcome back. My name is Mrs. Mallory. My summer child is showing. And we are still hanging out in the book of 1 Kings. Today we're talking about how God is generous. So we're generous. In our Bible story, we'll see how God generously gave food. The last food I ate was for breakfast, and I always have the same thing. Warm toasted bagel with some schmear cream cheese and a hot cup of tea. Mmm. I like my routine, okay? And it only takes me about five minutes to make, which is about as much brain power as I can muster before I get that hit of caffeine. Ah, enough about me. What about you? What was the last thing that you ate? It's great when we can have a delicious meal. But in our Bible story, there was someone who was almost out of meals. Let's see how she gave generously and how God gave generously. If you'd like to read this story on your own Bible at home, you can find it in the book of 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 8 through 16. If you'd rather watch a short animated version, you can follow bit.ly slash God is generous and then click back here so we can dig into some more. See you in a few. Welcome back. Now that you've read or watched the story, I'd like you to talk about this. What surprised you the most about this story? Why was it surprising? I think this story is a great example of what trust in God can look like and how God uses the most unexpected people to teach us the coolest things. So you see, in Bible times, a widow was considered one of the lowest of the low in society. Widows were marginalized and not many people would go out of their way to help them, which means that when a widow eventually ran out of something to keep her and her family afloat, like flour to make bread, it's not very often that the widow would make it because no one would help them. But here comes Elijah on God's orders to seek out the widow. And I don't know about you, but if Elijah had asked me to give him my last bit of food, I can tell you what I might have done. Um, I don't know you. Mallory doesn't share food. This is mine. Go get your own. But the widow listens as Elijah encourages the widow to trust God to provide. She has faith that God loves her and she never runs out of flour or oil to make the bread. Can you imagine how tough it must have been to look at your last pinch of food and then give it away? Or maybe for her it wasn't because she knew that God's generosity never runs out. Pretty cool, if you ask me. To help us remember how we can be generous like God and like the widow, we're going to play a game called Keep Away Giveaway. To play, you'll need an empty play space, at least three players, and some non-breakable thing to toss back and forth, like a ball or a pillow or a stuffed animal. So go, fly my pretties, gather what you need, and then come back to find out how to play. Yes, good, you have all of the things. Our Bible story today was about a woman who gave very generously to Elijah when he was in need. 
Giving generously brings joy, while never sharing and doing things only for ourselves doesn't bring real joy, long-lasting joy. Our game will show you what I mean. One player is going to be the middleman. All the other players form a circle around the middleman. The players will toss the ball back and forth over the middleman's head to keep him or her from catching a pass. If the middleman happens to be shorter than the rest of the players, to make it equitable, the players that form the circle should kneel on their knees while they pass the ball back and forth. If the middleman does catch the ball, the person who lasts through it will become the new middleman. If the middleman can't catch the ball within a minute, another team member will swap places to begin a new round. Everyone should have a turn as the middleman before you stop playing. I'll keep a timer so that you can keep track. And if you need to restart the timer, just backtrack the video. So get ready, get set, go. Welcome back, passeroos. Passeronis? Now's a good time to pause and grab a swig of water if you need it. So go do that and I'll be here when you get back. Welcome back! Now I'd like you to turn and talk about this. What was it like to be the person in the middle who had the ball kept away from you? Why did it seem fair or unfair to keep the ball away from the person in the middle? Tell about a time someone was generous in sharing with you and how you felt. Keeping things for ourselves and not sharing doesn't feel very good in the long run, especially if it means leaving someone else in need. For the widow in our story, that meant sharing the last food that she had to feed herself and her son. She knew that God is generous and she chose to give to Elijah. There are so many ways that we can give and with God's help, we can give in big, generous ways that mean a lot to the people around us. And giving brings way more joy than keeping things for ourselves. So before we pray, I'd like you to brainstorm ways that you and your family can be generous this week. Now that you've had a good think as a family, let's pray together to bless your ideas and to make them a reality. Ready? Dear God, thank you for being generous to us always. Help us to share generously with others, just like the widow in our story shared with Elijah. If they are pleasing to you, may we take our ideas of how to be generous 
and act them out this week to show others more of who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, all right, my friends. It's time to talk about our vision, to live the teachings of Jesus so that everyone may experience God's love and grow in spirit-filled relationships. Here's one way that you can be a part of living into that vision. Every year, the Herndon United Methodist women assemble hygiene kits. In the kits are things like washcloths, some soap, a toothbrush, toothpaste, and some band-aids. Once the UMW assembles these kits, they send them to UMCOR, which is the United Methodist Committee on Relief. UMCOR collects and distributes these kits to people around the world who may not have these simple hygiene supplies because of a natural disaster or a big accident or because they're experiencing homelessness or any number of other things. If you'd like to help out, you can donate by texting Herndon UMC to 77977 and typing UMCOR in the memo box. Or you can go to umcmission.org slash UMCOR hygiene kit to find out how you and your family can assemble your own kit, which only costs about $12. Or you can buy just one of that kind of supply and then drop it off at Herndon UMC if you live close. It's just one other way that you can show generosity. That's all I've got for you, my peeps. Until next time, know that God loves you, I love you. And that God is generous, so we can show generosity too. See you next time. Excuse you. Play. Listen. Stop interrupting. It's a family. Let's play. Pray. We're gonna pray. Together to pr mm. All this talk about food doesn't mean that you need to throw a tantrum. <laughs>